morning and welcome to ETX Covered. I'm David Lippman. Congressman Louis Gohmert has represented Texas's first district for nearly 16 years. This fall, he faces one of the toughest races since he was first elected. Representative Gohmert joins us now. Good morning, Congressman. Sure, good to be with you, David. The voters of the first district have sent you back to Washington several times. What would you consider the accomplishment that you're most proud of from your time there in the Capitol? Well, there are many things. Um, you know, one that uh, bears my name is the is Kerry's law that uh, the impetus originated in Marshall when Kerry Hunt was uh, being beaten and stabbed by her estranged husband, and her daughter was trying to call nine one one or was calling nine one one from the hotel room. Didn't get through. Uh, normally when i have a bill like that or or any bill i will look to the uh, committee of jurisdiction and if i'm not on it then i will take that bill to somebody that's on the committee because the committee's uh, members bills get priority in the committee and i did that with carrie's law after it was drafted and uh, I was told by people on the committee, look, everybody knows it happened in your district. Uh, it's okay, go ahead and have your name on it. Um, but uh, so that's one that actually bore my name, um, even though I initially was trying to get somebody on the committee of jurisdiction to carry it. But uh, having worked with the uh, man who is now the federal communications chairman, um, uh, now Chairman Pai, uh, he had taken a personal interest in it. And uh, in the Senate, I'd sent it over to uh, our Texas senators, but Amy Klobuchar, um, Democrat that ran for president, uh, was really excited about it. And her office let us know they'd like to carry it in the Senate. I was fine with that. And so we got that pushed through. And I know a lot of people uh, think the president is nothing but brash and conceited, but uh, he personally flew the family up to Washington and brought them to the Oval Office for the signing. And to watch his uh, interaction with with Carrie's children and especially her daughter that tried to call 911, whose tears in her grandfather's lap were the ones that uh, really pushed this thing forward. Um, it was really quite touching, but that was uh, a, a great moment to see that done. Well, this time around, it seems like you're facing one of the more spirited challenges that you've had in a while. So do you think that says anything about changing demographics, ethnographics, or desires here in the first district? Um, it says a lot about the individual running. Um, and, and, and let me say, you know, I didn't expect to be in Congress this long, but as I told a New York reporter that asked uh, in the past year, you know, how long I would serve, I said, it's up to the people of East Texas, but, uh, I feel like I did one time at a scary movie at a theater halfway through. Members, I was very sorry I came, but I couldn't leave members, until I saw how it turned out. Uh, we're on the brink of, of moving into socialism. I never thought it would happen. Uh, we have had so many young people that have just been miseducated into thinking socialism was a good thing. And, uh, you know, we've seen it from Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer uh, and, and so many other Democrats. They are wanting to move in that direction. Joe Biden's never been for socialism. And then all of a sudden he's had to move in that direction to placate the most liberal in his party. So we're we're really in danger. And I mean, Marx and Engels, Lenin, they got so much wrong. But the biggest thing they got wrong was not foreseeing the creation of a middle class in America and then on into some other countries. Uh, under socialism, you only have two classes. You have uh, a tiny ruling elite and then everybody else. And everybody else is miserable. And as I found um, when I was uh, uh, on an exchange program with the Soviet Union during the summer in college, um, the Soviets were telling me that people always squealed on each other because uh, they said, in your country, you can work harder, make more money and move up. In our country, there's only one way to move up. 
we're all here. There's a small group of leaders. And the only way we can move up is to step on each other. And I'm seeing that move toward that in America. So, yeah, it's a spirited challenge. And uh, I wish uh, there was more accuracy in my opponent. But uh, uh, it is what it is. And, and people understand when you run for office nowadays, there's going to be a lot of unfair, false, dishonest even statements made. So I don't think it's a reflection of the district at all. I mean, my district didn't want Portland protests down here in, in East Texas. That's not our thing. You know, we don't we we'd rather work things out without uh, violence or protests. But um, I, I think uh, it is a reflection, though, of the danger this country is in. We've, we've seen Christian persecution begin uh, and arise and get stronger. And uh, so we've seen a rise in anti-Semitism and we've seen a rise in Christian persecution. The two seem to go hand in hand. And so it's a very dangerous time and it uh, it's going to take a real battle to put that back in its jar and back in Pandora's box. But uh, I, I can't give up at least trying to serve people in East Texas while there's this kind of danger of socialism taking over. More to come with Congressman Gomert after the break, including his reflections on his COVID-19 diagnosis and his thoughts on the failure to pass another coronavirus relief package. We're joined again by Congressman Louis Gomert. Congressman, moving to a bit more of a personal subject, you got COVID-19 a few months ago, but as I've heard from so many people who've had it, they really learn a lot more about the virus once they get it. So what would you say you learned about it since your diagnosis? Well, I was very, very fortunate because I was going to be supposed to travel with the president on Air Force One back to Texas. I got tested and it had to have been right when, at the very beginning of when I could have tested positive. Uh, I had no symptoms at all at that time. Uh, so I had a couple of days before the symptoms even started arising, and I'd already started taking hydroxychloroquine, erythromycin, and zinc. And as Dr. Bartlett at Midland had encouraged uh, uh, a, a steroid nebulizer, twice a day, five minutes each time, uh, breathing in the vapor from steroid to protect the alveoli in the lungs. Uh, as Dr. Bartlett was explaining to me, that virus, and I didn't realize this, but it attacks, you know, the little air sacs in the lungs and just it disintegrates those from inside the cells. And and I'd wondered about that, David, because, uh, you know, we, we kept reading and hearing about so many people would get put on ventilators and then die. I'm going, how come they're dying on ventilators? Uh, you know, you wonder, is it the ventilators? Well, it wasn't the ventilators, as Dr. Bartlett explained. Uh, that virus attacks those air sacs and makes them basically mush. And so by the time they got put on ventilators, people you know, they were getting 100% oxygen from the ventilators, but they had nothing in their lungs to convert that into uh, oxygen that the red blood cells could use. And that's why they would lose their lives. So to protect those air sacs, I, I didn't realize the importance of that. After hearing last week from Nancy Pelosi, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and Senator Mitch McConnell, it seems like a new coronavirus relief plan is not going to happen before election day. And given that the chasm that stands between the White House, Senate Republicans, and House Democrats, who knows if there will be one at all? So do you think that there should be another bill? And if you go back to Washington, what would you help do to push for that? Well, we have been pushing for that. And, and uh, we have been pushing Republicans in the House. We're in the minority. But we have been pushing for that because there were areas in which people fell through the cracks and didn't get the help they needed. Businesses that have gone on under specifically because of, you know, the, the lockdown on their businesses. We never had anything like that. So there's additional people that needed help 
that were in financial trouble, not due to any fault of their own, but due to this unconventional shutdown uh, in response to COVID. Uh, we didn't know exactly what we were dealing with, and there have uh, been mistakes made across the country in responding to it. But um, yeah, we did need an additional package. And one of the things that Republicans were pushing for was a, a, a exclusion from liability uh, from people suing, trying to say we got COVID here or there. And I've had experts tell me that contract contact tracing is important, but once you have over a million people that have contracted a disease, the contact tracing, you know, you can find out and warn people, uh, but as far as trying to run down specifically where somebody got it, when it's this widespread, that's just going to end up being virtually impossible. And so we could end up having the country tied up in litigation without anybody really being able to show where they got the COVID virus. So that was one of the things that Republicans wanted in the House, Senate, and the president. Uh, but we also needed uh, money to assist those that were losing their business or had lost their jobs due to no fault of their own. And um, unfortunately, uh, there is a lot of bailout money in there uh, in the House bill, so why I couldn't vote for it. Uh, just it, it ran up our, our debt another two trillion on top of the trillions that have just been run up this year already. It's just incredible the amount of debt we've run up this year. Any final thoughts you'd like to share with the voters of District 1? Yeah, I, it's it's been a, a real pleasure and, and an honor really uh, in recent days to get to um, help so many areas of my district. In fact, uh, in uh, Lufkin, uh, it's been named as a, a foreign port, uh, and that's a foreign tra trade zone. May sound a little unusual, but they met uh, the distance requirements and whatnot. And that's going to be huge for Lufkin's future. Uh, it will be nice when we can get back to uh, developing more oil and gas in East Texas. That's been good for East Texas. And it, uh, it has been nice having, you know, low gasoline prices. Um, it, it has uh, uh, been, you know, a comfort to me to be able to help uh, counties within our district that got hit by not near as badly as we thought, but by Hurricane uh, that came through. Congressman, thanks for being with us this morning. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you, David. Thank you.